Professor Anna Meredith and the team on Brown Sea Island there. Now, don't forget, you can find out more about the show on Twitter. We're at Inside Out South. Finally, a story to warm even the coldest of hearts. 85-year-old Mar Smith has been dishing out food to the vulnerable and homeless of Oxford for the last 25 years. Here's her story. Mar Smith is unique. She is just one in a million. She's, just, she's, got, she's got a wonderful philosophy of life. She's not saying hallelujah and things like that, you know. She just, it's just the way she works. And even with the men, they know where they stand with her. You know, if she goes, look here, young man, look at you. you know, this, this older man. <laughs> and they know they can't mess around with her. There are many charitable people and there are many angels in the community, but I've, I've never met one as giving and as generous from her soul. She asks for pennies if you've got them in the pocket, but if you can't afford that, you don't have to provide anything. So when I started, I would write her a poem every week, and she thought that was due payment. And, you know, I was at work, and then um, I saw this young, young lad, about 1920. Was, I was coming from... I was at work at the time, and then I was coming up James Street and saw this young man eating from the bin. And it, it turned my stomach. I think, this can't be happening. I don't know what happened that morning. Something happened that I, I just can't explain what it is. And I leave work, finish my, my duty, and came home, and Gary was there. He wasn't married yet. And my daughter was there. Was there. And I said to them, what happened? And then Gary says to me, you, got, you always say you want to do something. No time now. So I um, run around, spend my own money to get food and borrow pots and pans from friends. <laughs> and it, it just started like that. It just some, I didn't know it would reach so far. First day, nine people came in. And the second week, I think, is about 30. And the third week is 150. Out here was full because there was nowhere else for them to go. Well, I came here to Oxford as a homeless person and um, I got to know other homeless people. And one Wednesday afternoon, they all started walking this way and I was like, where's everyone going? And they're like, oh, we're going to get a roast dinner. And, you know, it's the best roast dinner in town and you know, it doesn't cost anything, so I came along. and I was, I was still new to being homeless, so it was all kind of scary, you know, meeting new people, going to new places. And then all of a sudden there was this lovely lady that was like, well, here's some soup, here's some bread, here's a roast dinner that's amazing. Um, and, that, and that sense of uh, compassion and, and help and assistance, it, it just flows from this place and it helps give everybody a, a, a helpful reminder that we're human. I've been coming here since 2010 when I had a stroke. I live alone. It is a lonely life. So when I'm out here, I'm very happy. The atmosphere is terrific. You get to know the people, and I enjoy the food. But I particularly like curry. Yes, because in Jamaica, that's a speciality. And I have that every time. And I say, oh, curry goat, Mom. It's my favorite. <laughs> My role here, I just help my mum cook. Uh, most people call me the chef, uh, but <laughs> I've had training, but, but I, I enjoy doing it. This is just a natural progression, because like, when she was at school, she used to cook for the teacher, help all the other pupils. When she came to England, did the same thing. And our, our house was always filled with, with, with somebody different. Do, uh, she's cooking for somebody. So like, who's that? I said, oh, somebody needed some food. Food bank comes here in the morning. Uh, we select what food and we cook up on the day of what what's available. We all do mucking and we know 
exactly what's needed. We're proactive, and it really works out well. When, with the watchful eye of Mao. If you want a lesson in management, look at Mao. And uh, that expression says it all. I do a bit of everything. Cut the onions. And washing up. Soup. Pots of very nasty things to be. <laughs> We do vegetarian, we do vegans, whatever people are. They deserve to have what they want. The people, it's no different to anybody else. Homelessness is more than just not knowing where you're going to sleep. You can't improve your life on an empty stomach. It's so easy to find an excuse not to cook or not to come to some of these free food places. And I regularly wouldn't eat for two days because I didn't have enough money and I couldn't get the incentive to make the effort. Loneliness is a killer for anybody. And when they came in, give them a hug, sit and talk with them, and they feel so much better. This lady said, if it wasn't for here, I would die. Yeah, she said, if, it, if I wasn't coming here, I know that I would die. And they're really lovely guys. Men now, the men and the women now. So yeah. And they bring their children to see me, to see their grandma. I'm just so amazed by her that she said I knew him as a little boy. And he's come back and she remembers her memory. She remembers what he was like and his mother and all the stories about them and, and how so and so. And they all, it's funny that she's Mrs Smith, but all the family call her Mrs Brown. Have you heard that? They all call her Mrs Brown, or Ma Smith, or Sister Smith. She's got all these different stories. <laughs> and the fellows that they, they come, they often call her Sister Smith, thinking she's a nun, you know. <laughs> but she just has this way with her. Well, she's, she's all on mothers, um, both the volunteers and, um, and the homeless. Everybody looks up. She likes to be called Ma to the people who, um, who she accepts. It's a part of being human is to show love, help somebody, you know, build them up. But if I go for my life and I can't help one person, then I'm being selfish. And that's, I haven't been brought up like that. I've been brought up to help somebody any way I can. As long as I live, I think I'll be here because I can't manage. We're not just a number. We're not just a, a forgotten citizen or you know I'm Nigel though I get to be me you know and that that means more to me than anything I, you know, I'll never be able to thank her enough the people need love and attention and that's that is really that maybe that's what keep them going yeah. I, I was up in town one evening about half or six and they came out from I don't know where Ma, why, 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 are you, why, are you, why are you doing down here? And everybody wanted to pay my bus fare. <laughs> so I said, don't have my bus pass. <laughs> they were so protected. It means everything to me because I help somebody. And it's the greatest thing in, in a person's life is to help somebody else. No greater love than this. The scripture said, no greater love than this, that he gave his life for us. I can't give my life, but I can give my time. And great news. Ma Smith was given the Queen's Award for Voluntary Service in August. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. More next week. Till then, bye-bye.